Y'all are going to have to help me a little bit this morning. I walked into the sanctuary, and the first person I saw was Jenny Miller. And then I saw her two children, and many, many memories flooded into me. And then as I look around the sanctuary, I see not only those who are here today, but those who are not here, who have gone before us. I see their faces. I remember their lives. I'm so grateful to have been pastor of this congregation to help celebrate the lives of so many people who gave so much to this church who have gone before us. And so my heart is full and uh, flooded with grace. I'm so grateful for the sowing of this incredible ministry here on the corner of Durant and Dana and Channing Way. We're indebted to you, 50-plusers, and we're indebted to those whose heart and spirit and life you have brought into the sanctuary this morning. You've seen many remarkable changes in your 50-plus years here, including change that hasn't always been great for you, and change that's been absolutely fabulous for you and has moved us forward. And in the midst of all those changes, I also think we feel that there are things that haven't changed all that much when we go to a really deep level and deep place. So I'll just share a little story with you that I promised I would tell today. On Thursday evening, I was able to attend a fundraiser amidst that terrible rain in the city for Human Rights Watch. A former reporter and journalist for KPFA was at the fundraiser and asked me what I did, and I responded that I was senior minister here at First Congregational Church of Berkeley, and she smiled and knew immediately our church and what our church stands for. And so she said to me, thank you for your long history of openness and outreach to the neighborhood and to Berkeley. This I love. Your congregation is really the church of the city. I said to her, you are welcome. And may I quote you in Sunday's sermon? <laughs> her response, absolutely. So we begin this morning with hearts full of thanksgiving, and hopefully later this week there will be hearts full of thanksgiving in every household in our congregation as we continue this mood of thankfulness and celebration throughout the week. For in every instance of our lives, even in the most difficult and tender of times, we can always discover and we can always be open to embodying a deep spirit of gratitude. I think gratitude is at the heart of faith, and I believe that it is the fundamental spiritual emotion. Even Job, in the midst of profound suffering and pain, found a way to enter into those gates with thanksgiving and praise. In contrast to the practice of gratitude some of us grew up with, and this was the way I grew up, with a sense of obligation and oftentimes guilt as part of the demands of a religion focused more on piety. How grateful I am today to be a part and a member of a congregation focused on gratitude. I believe that I have learned the lesson of gratitude in this congregation a sense that no matter what, in any circumstance of life, there is always grace, without condition, and sometimes undeserved. So this morning we're studying that familiar story of the farmer planting the seed. And instead of thinking about this story as an idea of a bunch of different seeds, I'd like to suggest that this story is about you and me as the seed, as individual seeds. Sometimes I'm like that seed that falls onto gravel. I hear the word, I respond enthusiastically, but I only go so deep into my thanksgiving. Before I know it, I'm up and at it and on to something else. I go only so deep. 
When we get stuck in that shallow gravel of thank you, a sense of ingratitude or entitlement can spring up and nab us. At other times, we are like that seed that is cast into the weeds. And this, I think, is a life built around worry. It's great for this week because I know what some of you are doing even in the midst of this sermon. You're putting together your Thanksgiving menus. <laughs> so here goes the worry. Will I get everything that needs to be done? Would I get everything done? Will the turkey be dry? Will we run out of gravy? Here's my favorite one from my childhood. I hate Aunt Dorothy's jello salad. Do I have to eat it? What if Thanksgiving is ruined? The seed is strangled in worries and false illusion of happiness, and nothing comes from that seed of worry. But the seeds of a grateful life, if I open to the deep goodness all around me, if I learn to listen and to see and to take it all in, that seed, when I am that seed, I might produce a harvest beyond my wildest dreams. I believe that the gift of gratitude is more than remembering to mutter, thank you. It is more than just being polite, oh thanks. It is a world view, a way of living and giving and embracing life. Gratitude is a way of our being in the world that encompasses every moment of our lives and therefore has the power to change your whole life and the harvest of your life. Throughout this season, I have been remembering Gary. I met him many years ago when I was a pastor in Des Moines, Iowa. Gary was not a member of my church, but one of his friends knew that I might be available to visit him in the hospital and asked me to come. Gary had AIDS. He was in the hospital, and it was in the early years of the disease when folks were still trying to compre comprehend what it meant to have HIV or AIDS. His parents, when they got the news, were horrified and unable to accept their son. When they came to visit the hospital, they told him that he needed to confess his sins before God and ask for forgiveness for his life on earth. They left the hospital after that and never saw their son again. The community that grew up, around, that he grew up in and was around him, went with the parents and kept their distance and their silence too. And so Gary was so very alone and in tremendous spiritual pain that could not be abated and at moments was far more powerful than physical pain. I visited with him often in the next weeks, and not once did I ever hear him complain. In those visits, he poured out his grief for his family, but I also heard his forgiveness, and I heard him hold his compassion for them. He wept for the shortness of his life, but never about his life. After many days of prayer and conversation, I watched as he came to a place of deep and abundant calm. And I came to believe that the only thing left for Gary to do on this earth was to go home. I was not there when he died, but the nurse called, that's her now, <laughs> But the nurse called to tell me that his last words were these, thank you. The gospel story reminds us the seed that is cast upon good earth is the one who hears and takes in and receives the news, and then a harvest is produced beyond his wildest dreams. That is Gary. Gratitude is a way of being in the world. 
It is not dependent upon things for which we want to give our thanks. It may not even be dependent upon our human relationships, treasured as they are, or perfection in this life. The heart of gratefulness comes from that deep place of being aware of the sacred gift that life is, even in the midst of trial, loss, and suffering. It is Gary who taught me this lesson. There is a harvest that was finally gathered this past week in our country, one too for which I am extremely grateful. It's almost two years ago now that I was sent by Church World Service to Las Vegas. Yes, Church World Service sent me to Las Vegas <laughs> to witness President Obama's rollout speech on the immigration policy. It was an incredible day for me. The speech was held at a high school where many dreamers were students, and I waited in line with many of the dreamers outside of the school getting ready to be let in to hear the president's speech. When we came in, there was such joy and excitement in the room. People were on the edge of their seats, and we heard the president speak. At the end of his speech, the mood was in two ways, both euphoric, so excited and so hopeful, and many of us were weeping. Sadly, after that day, nothing has happened for two long years as things have continued to go badly upon our border with thousands of unoccupied children and teens arriving daily and deportation in our cities and towns of so many some of them friends who have been sent back to dangerous countries and the violent situations they were trying to escape. So President Obama's decision to grant temporary relief from deportation of undocumented members is a moment for deep thanksgiving for us in this country. Because of this, many families, many families, will be able to celebrate a different kind of Thanksgiving this Thursday, one that upholds the unity of families and the dignity of all persons. Thank you. Of course, the decision will be attacked, and it is imperfect in its execution, as many of these are. But there is in the midst of this vision justice, love, and inclusion which is at the heart of the very first Thanksgiving in this country and should be at the center and the heart of all our thanksgiving. And remember when those pilgrims gathered at that first Thanksgiving table that it had been a time of suffering and loss, starvation and peril. Half of them had died that first year and most families had dug graves and buried their children and it was something so simple. It was corn. It was the maize that was brought to them by our nation's first people that saved the community. A table on that day was set with generosity, inclusion, and love. How poorly we have lived up to that first table of God's grace. Perhaps we can confirm as we gather in our homes and our tables this Thursday that a harvest of gratitude, that the harvest of gratitude is called to be a political value in our nation as well as a spiritual value. President Obama is leading the way with that as well, for he spoke in biblical terms on Thursday from the book of Exodus when he said, you shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, for you were once strangers in the land of Egypt. As the gospel reminds us, when the seeds fall into good earth, the harvest will be amazing. So on this Thanksgiving Sunday, come 
Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of Harvest Home. For you who have been in the pews for 50 years, and for you who have come for the first time today, we give thanks. For the little acts of kindness all around us, and the magnificent signs of hope among us, we give thanks. For our aching backs, and our tired feet that can still get us to the next place, God, I give thanks. For all the time we have wasted in our lives, and for the fullness of time, we give thanks. For families, beloved friends, and whole communities of grace, gratitude, and generosity, we give thanks. For the seeds, all the seeds, you who are seeds we have planted and for yes the seeds that fell on the gravel and yes the seeds that fell into the weeds those we give thanks for too because it helps us to get to where we are and for the seeds that have fallen on good earth we give thanks gather it all in gather it all in before those winter storms begin because God, our Maker, does provide, trusting that all our needs will be supplied. Come, all you thankful people, come. Come to God's own temple. Raise today and throughout the week and the rest of your lives gratitude for the songs of Harvest Home. Amen.